Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, go quick little backstory, and then we'll get into some wrenching just so it makes sense. So, a couple of videos ago, we got uh, a couple of blown up Kohler V twin engines out of uh, some busted up engines. We got two engines back together that would run, and then we put the two engines together with that coupler in the middle of them and ran them together and made a little steel frame underneath them. This is going to be like a homemade go kart of sorts. And I'm still not quite sure where it's going to go, but I'm trying to gather all the pieces for it and we're going to kind of build it as we go along. Having said that, I picked up this rear end right here. It is out of a 1963 Harley Davidson golf cart. And what's good about that, it has neutral, forward, and reverse, and brakes all built into the one transmission, transaxle. And uh, that's going to be the, uh, of course, what they're going to go connect to somehow, some sort. Anyway, uh, it came from uh, Facebook Marketplace. Gentleman had removed it from a cart. He worked at a scrapyard. Said, hey, that'd be awesome to go put something together with. So they hacked it out with some torches and it sat for a long period of time. It really does not turn at the moment. So I figure we'll go throw this up on the bench. We'll look into it, see what makes it tick, and hopefully we'll be able to fix it. And then kind of, you know, keep picking away and moving on with this project of making something kind of funky. All right, without further ado, let's get that on the operating table and see what we got. All right, so the way it was set up, this would have had an engine probably over here somewhere with a CVT belt driven to this pulley that's all banged up and bent up. And it would change sizes as the RPMs change and change your speed. It's like a, a sheave. This, this moves in and out or should move in and out. That spins, but if you grab the rear, and I don't know if you can see the si other side's turning the opposite direction, like an open differential, but if you try to grab both ends of them and turn it, you can't get the rear to go. Let's um, bend up these levers. This is the shift fork for it. Let's get these bent up where they should be and try bumping it into gear and see if it kind of goes through. I have a feeling possibly it's kind of filled up with water. But let's go see. The dubby towel has been sitting out for a long time, so. Get these. Get some kind of semblance. It's like that tab. This is kind of like a that up there. All right. Not sure what that did down below. So that locks it in one gear. It's the other gear. So I think actually the middle part is what's doing anything. That should be neutral, right? Then that would be either a forward or reverse. And that would be forward and reverse, and or reverse, and then neutral again. Let's um, get that bolt off, get these two levers right out of here. We don't need them. And uh, I kind of wonder if we put some gear in gear and put some really torque on it, or do you just want to open the cover and look inside? We're probably going to configure this in our own fashion anyway. Does that stay? Let's um, throw some of the washers back on for now. Put that on there. What do you think this is? Just like a stop, maybe? Definitely doesn't look like it's sitting in the right direction either, huh? Let's see that bits up. It's smashed down pretty good, too. We have you see we have all of this. Let's give a twist on that. That's about where that should be. I'm not quite sure what it does. It goes over to here. Um I think we should just take some of the bit material right off of it. Let's get these six bolts out of it and we'll, we'll pop the center of the case open anyway. I want to see what it looks like inside. So do you, you know you do. This rod back here is for a brake. The brake is back in there, but we'll get into that later. Let's get this cover off of there. Goes with that. Yeah, that whole linkage is connected to that. I wonder if that's a uh, an info tag. Some 
this up out of our way. Let's give that a wrap. I don't know how the shift forks are lined up underneath there, whether that's what's going to fight us or not. It actually looks pretty clean. The dirt that I just dumped in it. All right. Let's um. Let's try this thing and take a better peek. There we go. I don't see any fluid in it, so it's empty. There's no gear oil in it at all. But it doesn't look like rust took over it too bad. It's a little bit there on the dipstick. Right there. It may have been flipped over or something. I'm not quite sure what this assembly is here. What this is doing. Going across and back and we would get it out of our way. I wonder if we could take the front of this off because we're probably not going to use that anyway. Let's go see about getting this off. And it's, my guess is probably just a big nut underneath here and get that out of the way. Right now it's a gear. We should be able to move that fork. There we go. Now we're in neutral. Let's see if we can get these apart like we talked about. Looks like it's got a rust hole right through it. Let's go give them a little spray. Little fighting chance on the back side. I have um, an old snowmobile. That we're probably going to go steal the clutch setup. <laughs> well, the screw is turning, but it's stripped out in the in the hole. Let's go try another one. Get a little pry bar behind it. Try pressing, putting pressure on it behind and see if it'll work out. A little back pressure will help us. Doesn't look like a big fat no, huh? They're going to be an issue. <laughs> now you want to just drill them out maybe. How about a little bit of uh, cutting wheel action? I think our chances are we just kind of go, there's like a rubber gasket in between there. Try to slice right down in between them. See how the first one goes. Yeah, the button's up pretty tight. Might be better off drilling. the head off of it all completely. So I'm going to go around, do that to the other, I don't know, was it five or six of them? And should be able to get that off of there. That's a cracker open. He doesn't want to come apart easy. There you go. It's got some goodies in there. Should be the spring pack. It's like one I gotta grind a little bit more. Definitely <laughs> was underwater for a little bit. <laughs> that part of it anyway. And like I said, I, I'm not sure if we're gonna use any of this. I'm gonna try to use a, what's on a snowmobile. Again, we're just kinda making this up as we go along. Let's get a, uh, 
socket on that, see if we can take that uh, clutch assembly off and keep trying to remove what we don't need. Nope. How about that one? Yep. It's gonna help much. Go hit it with some juice. I'm hoping this is not a tapered shaft on the inside, but we'll find out. Bet you that's a little warm. Let's see if we can grab her with. Looks like it's bent too, like it was moving around. It had like a racking to it. Uh, I think we're gonna try to get like a pickle fork behind it and we'll try to run it out the rest of the way. That's what a pickle fork is for like front end components. But we're gonna use it for this. about a machine that does not want to come apart. Uh, where'd that bolt go? It looks like um, it welded itself to it at some point. All right, let's keep going. So that should just pop off. I think that washer is what retained this part of the tension. And it shouldn't be under that much spring all the way out, but I think we'll <laughs> st st stand to the side when we whack on it. Actually, it looks like the end of it might be a little splayed out. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Looking to see if there's like a C clip or something on it before we start going crazy. I would think it would just been that bolt in the washer that held it. We probably get a pulley on that. Puller, rather. The whole thing might actually even come off together, too. We're just looking at the galling that we got right there. Whatever's happening with that. Can we see inside that hole? Yeah, it's like somebody. I don't know if somebody took a welder at some point. I put a glob of weld in there, like it spun the key and they, I don't know. I'm going to take an air gun and blow some of that crap out of there and get a better look. Yeah, it looks like it's got a key kind of going through two separate sections of it. Like an inner and an outer. I wonder if we can, um, I don't know what the, what part of the puller we're going to use though. Yeah, let me get, get you set up, hold on. There you go. So I don't know. I need a poker. I don't know if this is just going to be what is um, part of the shaft going into the gearbox where this one is. I would say it's probably this one, right? I'm going to try to get... I don't want to put that bolt back in there, you know. Um, we need something to push off of. We can get a puller on the, on these three sides, but we got to be able to, you know, pull back on it and push on that surface right there, but not that surface. <laughs> All right, let's um, see what we can come up with to get this apart. 
So we need something to push on. I can't put that bolt back in there. It's bent, got that glob on there. I really don't want to get that jammed back in there. So let's go shopping a little bit, see if we could find another one of these that we just put it in there, push off of. Brass, you don't want brass, that's too soft. Let's go check the other stash. I'd say, I'm guessing half inch. No, I saw it. Actually looks bigger than that, doesn't it? 7 16 That's too small. Alright, what's between the two? <laughs> Quick. Hmm. I wouldn't think that's metric, not on a Harley Davidson for 1963, right? That's fine thread. Is it just an optical illusion? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. 7 sixteenths. That's like what we're looking for. Let's try that. So check this puller out. Long time subscriber sent me this. What's nice, it's got the three jaws, but it has the capacity of locking the three jaws down. So you're not just you know, trying to hold them together and hope like gravity doesn't kick them out. It's got an outer collar, this, that you spin and it shrinks it up, hopefully small enough. And it can't really walk itself off of. There. We're at the limits of it and then you run that in. I probably should have center punched the center of that, but let's go see what we get. I have to twist it to get it to lock. I'm gonna index that a little. It's a little wider. Right there. There we go. Let's go get ourselves a wrench on that. Crank that down and see if we can get her to pop. All right. All it did <laughs> was broke the aluminum housing. That sucks. Go we'll get it. Just doesn't know it yet. Yeah, bridge broke off in here of it. Might end up smashing all of it off of here. Again, I'm, I don't think I'm going to use any of this. I didn't want, didn't want to trash it until uh, we had a confirmation that uh, what we were going to use was going to work. Hmm. Now what? <laughs> just in case there's some kind of weird snapper in this, go. Just give it a couple of whacks. What should happen, it, it should be able to rotate and, and slide inward and allow this sheave, the, the shiv sheave, to work outward and slide on these. But again, everything is so rusted up and locked up. Hmm. Yeah, so I looked over it for a minute and I do not see any other way to grab anything. Because this is all sheet metal. It's not like we could put claws here. But it's just not going to, there's nothing to it. I tried looking behind, see if we can get like a really large collar over the whole thing. The only thing I could think of is we're to take this whole assembly, we were to put it in a press, you know, try pressing it through it, but the body of it, it's not gonna fit under a press. So I think our best bet is maybe just to take a air hammer and just crack the rest of this right out of our way and try to get to this bushing. See if we can get the rest of the, again, these pieces off of here, because what I wanna do is replace this with the snowmobile setup that I have, or use that snowmobile setup somewhere else. So we just put like a regular pulley on here or sprocket on here with a shaft coming back and another, you know, uh, Sprocket and then we'll run a chain to it. But I need to get all this crap off of here first that's been trashed. Just trying to see if there's anything else that I forgot, but I wouldn't think so. I would just think the bolt and the washer would be what retained that. There's that um, that half moon of a, of a keyway key in there, but I don't think that's stopping anything from happening. I think 
possibly somebody went have went in there with a welder, like I said, had that weird Let's uh, pop it back in gear, just to keep it from rotating on us. And make a lot of loud noise. Vibrated off. Should be just stuck in a hole in there. Of course, everything's rotted. Yeah. All right, so let's um. There it goes. <laughs> that was funny. So now we got to do the same for the outer. Let's take a wire wheel. We'll clean up all this right here. Get all this crap off of here because this is what we're gonna have to back it off of, and uh, get that out. See if we can get that key out of our way too. We need that out. So you can pop that key out. Bushing or a bearing that is right there. I think we're gonna run into the same problem. We don't have a way to really get a pull around there. Like the other part. Let's see, actually, yeah, do, we, you know, have, do we have three of those? No, I'm gonna put bolts in it and try drawing it. That's probably a bushing and this was meant to spin independently on that. I don't know that for a fact, but. Hmm. Uh, let's, let's, um, maybe we'll put a little bit of pressure on it. We'll put that bolt in it. I wonder if we could hammer on the front of it and put pressure behind it and see if it'll do anything. You know, worst case scenario, we just torch all this crap off right now and we could work with that, but let's see if we can get that out of our way. Actually, these two should move independently of each other. So maybe we'll try driving some wedges down on it. Because that's what's supposed to be able to move. This whole section was supposed to be able to move and this get uh, tighter and looser on the belt to change the gear ratio. Yeah, let's try that. Let's go try wedging a couple screwdrivers in there and give them a whack. Actually, we have air tools. Why don't we just use them? Sometimes you get a plan in your head. You think it's gonna work? It doesn't. Come on back out. There you go. Let's make the same mistake twice. I guess the thing is you just got to keep upping your game <laughs> to get cooperation. So I can see it on the bushing now, it, it is definitely moving off of that. I got three pickle forks wedged in there. 
I'm just gonna run around with a hammer, keep driving them in as far as I can, and hopefully it'll slide right off of there. Let the readings continue. Yeah, and that should be a bushing. I think that was supposed to be able to spin on that shaft. And we got that outer. What is that? I think that was supposed to hold like oil or whatnot in it. That's been a long time since, huh? Yeah, let's hit that with a wire wheel, clean some of that off. See if we can get these off of here. Is that straf shaft straight? Looks like it. And we just got one more time to go do. And it should be all cleared off. It's already got enough room for us to work with though, so that's good. And right, let's get the rest of this junk out of here. Yeah, I don't think that's coming apart very easy. We may have to take a cut and wheel. We can cut this one. This one's so close, I don't know what we're gonna be able to do. That's got so much corrosion underneath it. Or we hit it with an air hammer. <laughs> it seems to be working good for us. Um, I know a lot of people are yelling at me, put heat on it. Uh, there's a bearing and a seal on the other side of this and I'm trying not to cook that. So that's a, a last resort. Now, let's see if this will do anything for us. Smack straight down this, see if we can make it a little bigger. That work? It's moving. There we go. Come on. Closer and closer. I don't know what... That doesn't look like it's very parallel to it, does it? I wonder if that's just like a dust cap or something. Let's go stab at that with a screwdriver. See if it moves. Yeah, that's kind of like a seal or something. Or a rubber bushing. Doesn't feel all that substantial. There it goes. Let me get the rag out of there. <laughs> it's eating the rag. Yeah, you can definitely tell why this machine was put in the junkyard, huh? I'm giving it a decent success rate. That looks like a seal of some sort. All right, I'm gonna go clean that inside up with a wire wheel. We're gonna go see if there's any kind of a clip or anything inside there that's holding that. Yes, I see a, a shoulder right there. I don't know if this right here is gonna come off of that shoulder or if this shoulder in this piece is all one piece and that you know that's that inner shaft that uh, is what really the diameter of it is it's hard to say um, I see the air ha hammer is working pretty good for us I was kind of trying to get clean in here if we could, if we could see like a, a gap in there that we know it'll slide on it but it's kind of almost looking like this and this is one piece let me go uh, a little bit better, better wire wheel. See if we can work this gap a little bit more. See if we can see a line there. Then we know that this will slide on here. Yeah, I took a pick and I picked that. I I don't see any space between there. So I, I have a feeling that this shoulder and this is all one piece, and it would want to slide off of that collar, which I really don't think is going to happen. But uh, worst case. There's more than enough for us to work with, and this is kind of the diameter of the shaft I want to work with. I'd rather work with that than, than that, you know? So let's take the air hammer, and we'll try to push from the back of this plate, and we'll see if this thing goes to pull forward some. If not, maybe we'll just take a cutter, we'll cut it, 
right here and get this out of our way. We'll just leave that little hub on there. Actually, if that little hub is on there, we, at that point, we might be able to get a puller on the back of that. Go see what happens. See any movement there? Did you? I didn't see any movement out here. Let's um. I think we're gonna cut that right off of there. I don't see a purpose for it. Hmm. I make a whale whale on it a little bit more. We'll just keep upping our game. We're in now. Hopefully we didn't cook anything on the back side. Another thing that we have given to us is these collars. And what these collars do, you are able to put them on whatever hub that you have, run these bolts down, it bites into the side of it, and then you the puller can go on this lip and try pulling that off. So we're gonna go set that up. I gotta go kind of clean it up just maybe a little bit more. Maybe we'll just go with that side. We'll run these in. And we'll give it a, you know, it's not imperative that we get that collar off of there, but I, I would like to get any of the other trash that's no longer. I still feel that that, that center is gonna come off though. And just a little cautious on um, what we'll have left to work with. We'll see. Well, ain't that the setup. There it goes. Slipping off the bolt. The whole thing is that. Keeps walking off the bolt. Mm. <laughs> at this point, I think I might just leave well enough alone. We'll get on to looking at the rest of it. 
So I say the next thing is when we get rid of the, all of this mess, it looks like two bolts right there. Hopefully we get enough clearance to get the bolts all the way out. We'll take this whole assembly up out of our way. We shouldn't need it. Well, I'd say that probably put up definitely the least amount of fight. <laughs> Good. Um, we can get rid of, and we'll take all the crap off of here that we don't need. We can get rid of that busted shock mount because I don't think we're going to use rear suspension. That shouldn't be an issue. There is like two sections of frame. You can see like one, you know, right there yet. Maybe we'll keep that. That might be what we weld to. Uh, we'll get rid of the shock and then we're going to start, we'll flip it around and we'll look in that brake assembly. We've got to try to figure out why this doesn't spin. We put it in gear. Why we don't get anything out of the axles coming through. What's locked up inside of here. Again, this is going to be maybe another its own gearbox that possibly could be full of water. <laughs> sure it's putting up a fight. what we're going to get into next is getting that brake assembly off of here. Possibly, it doesn't look like it's touching though. I don't know if that's what's holding us up. I would think this would just spin right with that shaft right through. And then when you would engage this le lever, which is fixed, this brake pad would stop this from spinning. But there's definitely an air gap. You know, that's not touching right now. So something's up. Right, I'm going to take a minute, go clean some of this crap off the bench and, uh, have at it. So what do you think? Is it going to fight us as much as the other side? I hope not. Well, that's not going to kill it. Oh, that one. Well, the bolt came out. That's a good sign. So I don't know. I would figure that's kind of tapered on the shaft too, right? Uh, let's give her some like love taps around it. Get that out of there. Yeah, it's got a key on it. And just like before, we don't have a way to um, get a puller on that. How many are yelling at me to use heat? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have enough of a lip to get a puller against here. Plus, I don't want to damage this. This, this part I need. This is going to be the brakes for it. So, let's, um, I don't know if it's necessary. I, I, I just don't know if we're going to have to get into the center of this unit. It does have a drain plug on it. Let's go take that plug out. We'll see what comes out of it. Gear oil comes out, we're good. If water comes out, then we know it's definitely got some issues, you know. I flipped it right over. Let's get the, um, this would be the drain plug anyway. Let's get an Allen wrench on them. Hopefully they come out. And is it that one? Nope. Well, that one. There we go. Run that home. What do you think? Water? I'm guessing water. Because why wouldn't it turn, right, if it was full of gear oil? <laughs> That's looking like rust right there. Uh, get the other one, keep that one to free up. And we can probably roll it into a pan or something. We'll see what we get. It's a little exploratory. See some rust in there? The other one. And definitely see some rust on the side of whatever that is right there. Uh, I would think we would have to pull the axles. Let's, right, let's go dump it in the pan, see what we get coming out of it. We'll wiggle 
la verdad. Give me something. Yeah, that was water. <laughs> That's a very, very luminescent gear oil. Yeah, there's no fluid in it whatsoever except for the water. So that's not a good sign. Uh, my guess is we may have to just kind of tear it apart, clean stuff up, put it back together. Not exactly what I wanted to do, but. The other thing I'm looking at too, I wonder if it's um, more of like a worm gear, but it should still turn when I turn the input shaft, you know? Worm gear is, uh, So, a worm gear, it goes through here and, and there's a gear that's kind of like a worm. The only way the rear is going to spin is if this is turning. You can't turn the axle to have the worm gear move. It, it's just too much of a drag on it. But that is, is no reason why that is doing that. It's kind of weird because we could turn through it and we could turn it so that the other side turns. Yeah. I wonder if we put... Yeah, water's pissing out of it. What if we put the uh, socket back on it and we get like a big breaker bar? I wonder if we could try to roll it through and get her to free up. I'd rather not tear it apart if we don't have to. Probably wouldn't hurt us to put some oil in it too, right? When we do it. I'm going to let that pee for a little bit and uh, we'll contemplate. I put the other plug in it, that's the, going in the bottom one. Let's go throw some diesel in it. And then we'll try to spin it and move it around and see if that kind of helps us. I don't know if it's going to piss out the other side or not. I'm going to go with that for now. Is it pissing out? It is not. <laughs> Let's go for more. So that does mean that the gearbox and the differential are two separate chambers altogether. And the gearbox seems to be okay. As far as not having moisture in it. So let's go throw that plug in it. We'll flip it over. We'll put the bolt back in where the, uh, the brake is and we'll see if we can try to get it to brake and spin free. Throw a breaker bar on it. Sometimes if you get a little bit of play, you kind of rock it back and forth. I don't want to snap the bolt off. It'll... It's not, not very strong. Okay, sometimes you can work that play. Take a second and try to get some clamps off. Clamp the rear end down so it's not bouncing around the bench. Yeah, let's see if that makes an improvement. end up having to take axles out of it. It seems like it's in the bottom. Like I said, the, the top going through here seems like it's okay. It's just whatever gear on the bottom is trying to turn. I'll keep working that a little bit more. Let's take a uh, marker and we'll mark the top of it. We'll see if we're getting any more movement as we go. Let's go with like white paint. Just do one of those. I'm losing my clamp. I'm gonna work on that a little bit, see if we can get her to do anything.
Seems like he's getting a little bit. <sighs> getting tired. Sometimes you just can't give up. Ah, oh, yeah. Something's happening. Make it all the way around. Oh, yeah. Just a little grindy, but let's go see if I uh, wonder if we could, um, let's pop it in here. That should be reverse. And that's forward. Awesome. I wonder if we can get like a heavy drill. Put it back in neutral. Hook a socket up to it. I just kind of work it. And then now uh, we'll drain that fluid out. We'll see what it looks like. But I kind of want to give her a couple hundred RPMs, you know? Nice. I really wasn't looking forward to splitting that, but we would have made for a good video. <laughs> All right, let me get a drill. All right, see if a little, little drill will do it. Great. All asbestos of it. <laughs> nice, kick it in high gear, see if we go. Let's, uh, nothing holding it in gear though. Let that fluid work through it. So here's the thing I wonder. Let's go see if we could turn. Nah. So I'm not crazy about that because that means if you let off or, or whatever, you can't push the engine, you know? So if you lose power or stall, it's just gonna lock the wheels up. So it is, like I said, a worm drive. It's bouncing in and out of gear because there's nothing holding it. Look at the RPM of the wheels too, trying to get an idea of like what we're going to have, what the ratio is going to be. What's that drill say for high speed? It'll tell us what a ratio is, right? I could probably look it up. You would think it would say right on it though. So say if the drill is 600 RPM, and we can count how many that turns. Definitely gonna need to spin it fast because uh, we got plenty of horsepower. Again, we got 40 horsepower. We're gonna be pushing it, so we don't need it geared that low. So we may want to do maybe like a almost a one to one to start. Seeming, I wonder if we can uh, flip over the CVT. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, but you know, the, I think a CVT transmission. We'll, we'll call it three to one, and then it's probably a one to one at top ratio at when the belt changes. Yeah, I spun it for about five minutes. Definitely got noisy bearings in it. And I, I know it's diesel fuel that we put in. It's kind of thin for, an, for gear oil. One of the axles is uh, wet, so it's coming past the seal on this side of it too. Uh, let's go flip it back over. We'll take the plug back out. We'll drain out, see what kind of comes out of it. Let's see what we get. I would think it'd be kind of like a rusty looking color. I don't know what you put in there too. <laughs> it's a literally gro growly dirt is coming out of it. That is not exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> There's like chunks of stuff in there. Yeah, we'll let that piss a little bit. We'll pull it to the side, we'll see what like settles out of it. Maybe we'll run a magnet in it and see if uh, we're getting like a bunch of rust particles. Well, that I would not say is uh, a good sign to have coming out of there. 
let's um run a magnet see anything that sticks to it. Let's go down with the the bowels of the mud. Oh yeah. I would say that is all metal. <laughs> it's not what I was hoping for. Um you know, sometimes you do something, you, you, you think it's a good idea, you see something, it's, it's a plan, and then you start getting into it, and you start seeing things that doesn't quite jive with what you want to try to do. I'm not writing it off yet, but there may be better options for us to try to use for it. I just like the fact that it had neutral forward and reverse. That was kind of the part of it that I was really kind of excited about. The differential does not seem like it wants to play very well. And it has a bunch of damage on the inside of it. I wonder if we could probably even just take this section of it and we could still have the gearbox at forward and reverse. I don't know about trying to get the bottom bolts off of there. You probably have to gut it first to do that. And we're still not dealing with all that crap, you know. Um, for shits and giggles, I don't know if we're going to need to pull an axle to get it apart from the diff. I, I wouldn't think so. We're this far. Let's go see if we could split it right here. We'll take a better look inside and, and see what's happening. Just everything's growling. Plus, when I'm trying to run the differential part of it, it's like a, you want to spin in one, one direction and one the other. That's even fight, fighting me. I'll show you. Hold on. So if you're making a turn, a differential wants to be able to roll, right? You can see how like one side wants to go the other direction. But then it, it binds. Right there, it's binding. So that means those gears are, are kind of cruddy too. Let's clean up the bench a little bit. Let's go split it open. You know, we're here. Let's go see how it ticks on the inside. And yeah, possibly we could use it, possibly not. Again, not the, you know, it seems like all the bearings are cooked too. I'm gonna take a minute. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna bother showing you, but I'm gonna go around and I'll buzz all these bolts off and we'll see if this side of the case will be able to, to come off of there. Hopefully. <laughs> I got all the bolts out. At least I think so. Let's see if we can get a, um, a chisel down inside there. Have an attempt to split. Sometimes, usually, there's like a tab that you can kind of work a corner. I don't see any though. Let's um, give her a couple of real hard hits out back first. Sometimes that'll be enough to there it goes. Jiggle or loose, you know. All right, now let's try not to mar the stuff. Is that? Double check and make sure I got all the bolts out. <laughs> Let's uh, hang this end off the bench. There it goes. Get you over there where you can see. I, said, I don't know if I need to pull the axles out or not. It's starting to piss out this axle. Let's, uh... there you go. We're in. Oof, yeah. The mud that's coming out of that. Let's get ourselves set up. Well, look what it's got for for gears. Go take a look. Yeah, it definitely. Uh, so that's what it is. A worm gear. If you look on top, the one that's up there. So that's what's called a worm gear, and a regular differential like on a car uses uh, a different setup and when you let off the car when you don't let off the gas the rear end this input of the wheel turning can influence the other well, it's actually going to be over here uh, it's a ring and pinion gear it can still spin the output of the transmission back towards the engine with this when you let off the input, it's going to lock the tires up. This does not have any influence. It, it can't speed the engine up. You can't use it for like engine braking. It's just going to lock right up and stay right where it wants to be. So that's kind of an issue for us, what we want to go use. And one of the bearings are no good, huh? I don't know why they're growling. So, like I said, I thought it was a, going to be a good option for us and it still might be that gearbox at least still might be something we can use in um you know input output in a neutral from it but i'm going to keep looking i think i'm in no hurry on this project it's just something to do for fun but um 
this may just go up in our stash and we can go use it for something else. Now you have an idea what we need. You know, it's going to need all the bearings. And I don't see any burned up gears. They look okay. I think it just sat with water in it for so long. That caused what it's doing. Yeah, because all this looks pretty good. I haven't seen water coming out of there. That's our forward neutral and reverse. So we'd have a flange there. I don't know if that is all one piece on the inside. I don't know if that's going to be, you know, is that, I would actually think it would be, you know, at least up to, to that gear. Right? Let's go put it in neutral. So I would think. Then we lock into a gear. Get in there. Go this way. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it's inside on those and it locks up. I think this, the middle one, the middle one is connected to that. And then that's the forward and reverse, forward and reverse on those. See, one's got two gears, one's got three gears. That's how it reverses itself. This is reversing an input with just two gears. You got one gear spinning one way, the other gear spins the opposite way. With three gears, it goes one, two, three, it returns itself. So whatever way this one's spinning is the same way, that one's gonna spin. So it maintains, that'd be the, say if it's the forward gear. And again, that would be the, the reverse gear because it goes the opposite direction. Hmm. What a mess, what a pile of crap. I'm a little disappointed, but Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? <laughs> Plus, I, I was kind of hoping for something a little, maybe even a little bit wider uh, wheelbase on it, but I could have worked with that. So, hey guys, <laughs> not around all winners, unfortunately, but uh, we got to go play and uh, make a mess and take out some plasma cutters and cut stuff and beat on stuff and destroy stuff and uh, it's a life's about, right? <laughs> hey guys, till then, I'll see you later.